Um, I'm going to try to, um, uh, try to uh, cover a broad sweep here in an efficient uh, period of time, uh, again, in keeping with the spirit of this. Uh, and I'm sorry for those of you who expected uh, a brogue. Uh, I, I, despite my name, it's a, it's a flat, flat American accent that you'll get. Um, so uh, here's our safe harbor statement. Um, I have to be careful about what I say in public um, the, uh, for all sorts of reasons. The, um, the company itself, Tesla, is, is very mission driven, has been so from the very beginning. I think at the beginning we would have defined ourselves more as mission oriented with respect to um, a revol creating a catalytic effect and, and uh, inspiring a revolution in sustainable transportation. But now with our energy storage project, we, uh, we have the opportunity to expand that mission even as we tighten it uh, uh, in terms of its uh, characterization here. And we're, we're now saying that, we, that our mission is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. Uh, and that's truly something that's deeply felt. The mission orientation of this company is extreme. I was with the company when there were just 50 of us. They're now uh, close to 12,000. Uh, but this is what we're trying to do, and not that what you're all trying to do isn't similarly challenging, but trying to enter the car industry and now challenging, uh, in some respects, norms in the utility industry uh, is no small job. Uh, and the folks who come together around this uh, are truly devoted to the exercise. Let me see here. There we go. Um, you know, we've come, we've come a long way. The company was founded in 2003, and, and uh, I've had the privilege of seeing most of it. Uh, we've moved through, uh, you know, our first product, the Roadster. Our second product, Model S, we'll be introducing another car uh, at the end of next week, uh, or midweek next, excuse me, our Model X. But the whole goal of the company is to get to or it's at least the vehicle side of the company is to get to the Model 3, which is that mass market EV. Essentially, the company was originally set up to do that. So we're only on a path right now, uh, and we haven't even hit the, uh, the, the goal that we originally set for ourselves. But this past year, and based on the battery technology that we developed for the vehicle and the expertise that we've grown over the course of time, we launched the, uh, uh, the energy storage business, and the reaction to that has been extraordinary. Uh, the vehicle business, as most of you know, started with the Roadster, moved through uh, Model S, and, and ultimately we want, want to get to that Model 3. Really, this is a story of applying uh, economies of scale uh, in order to get to that volume vehicle. Uh, it would have been very nice to start with a $35,000 mass market electric vehicle, but with no reputation, no capital base, and so forth, we didn't have that opportunity. But in the meantime, we're trying to inspire other OEMs to get into this business. We've helped some of them, notably uh, Daimler and Toyota to build their own electric vehicles, but through competition and through expanding that wedge of the market, we hope to attract other entrants in. I just returned from Frankfurt, where happily some of the major, Joe, uh, major OEMs are now, uh, are now coming into the space. Uh, Volkswagen and Daimler and, uh, and BMW all have uh, extraordinary offerings that are coming, so uh, I'm, I'm extraordinarily uh, happy about what's going on there. The first move that we made into, say, energy distribution was our supercharger network. In effect, we wanted our vehicles to be a perfect replacement for the incumbent technology. And so while most folks can satisfy their daily charging needs by plugging in their garage uh, every night or at their workplace, we wanted to solve that last 5%, so the long distance road trip, perhaps longer uh, where I come from than, uh, than in these geographies. But we began to set up this, uh, uh, this supercharger network, uh, which allowed for extraordinarily quick charging, extraordinarily convenient charging, and free charging initially everywhere in California, then throughout the United States, now, uh, now in Europe and in China, uh, where, we where we now have over 500 uh, stations, 3,000 bays, and, that, and the growth rate there is extraordinary. As I said, this moved us into distributed, uh, distributed connection and started our thinking about how we could play to solve that last piece of the puzzle, which is that if you really want sustainable transportation, you have to have uh, sustainable renewable generation as well. Uh, this, this, this problem is, is really pronounced in, in certain geographies like China right now where they have made a corporate national decision to move to electric vehicles, but they're going to be dragging along a generating infrastructure, notwithstanding some of Emory's statistics, that's heavy on coal. So uh, they know this and they want to get to the full solution. We know this and we want to help them get there. Um, we, we are a Silicon Valley company at its core. The other asset that we bring to this table is a, is a culture of electronics and software. We try and solve, solution, we try and solve problems first uh, with software rather than with hardware, and that opens up all sorts of opportunities for us. Uh, essentially, uh, our entry uh, into the uh, energy storage business was facilitated by our battery technology, which was the core of our early e 
efforts and, and made the cars possible. But what we're doing now is basically taking the same technology architectures for the core battery pack as well as the software layer, software and firmware layers and moving it into stationary purposes. So essentially, uh, we start with cylindrical cells, as most of you know. These are bespoke cells. Originally, we did use laptop cells, but these are, these are highly refined, our technology cells that go into modules. Those modules are then integrated either into battery packs for the car or battery packs for home or commercial, industrial, or grid use. Uh, we're facilitated in this journey by extraordinary improvements in energy density and uh, analogous reductions in cost. This is essentially the chart that we're looking at. Uh, this is the empirical path to this point um, by 2015, and these statistics uh, vastly uh, overperform the, uh, the projections uh, that are made by some of the most credible uh, agencies in the world. What we're now going to be doing in order to scale this effort, and be, scale is really a driver not just on the vehicle side but also on the battery side, as would you imagine, is to start building plants that build the batteries that we need to power not just the vehicle fleet as well as the, the, the emergent stationary storage market. The way to think about this gigafactory is that as extraordinary as it is, and you can see by this that its net output of one gigafactory is going to exceed that of the rest of the world of lithium ion batteries combined, think about this. That will supply 500,000 units of vehicles. In the U.S. every year, we consume close to 17 million, that again in Europe, that again in China, and then there's the rest of the world. If you think about a replacement cycle of somewhere between 10 and 15 years for a vehicle, you can then imagine how many of these plants we're going to need in order to expand the revolution uh, that we want to inspire. But the truth is that it's happening, and it's happening very quickly. This is the Gigafactory. Uh, to the right, that's the full vision. Uh, this might be the largest building in the, in the world by the time we get done a, uh, a, uh, a, an energy-intense manufacturing facility that will be entirely entirely powered by renewable uh, purposes. You see the solar on the roof there. You see adjacent wind. Uh, there are other technologies. And of course, we have the ability to store, store that energy for, uh, uh, for time shift use. Um, the, uh, the progress on the site, uh, keeping in mind that we essentially announced the site um, and didn't even break ground about this time last year is extraordinary. I was just up there last weekend. Uh, we're building a part of the building that's, that's one sixth of the total right now. And it's, there's no other way to say it. it's ginormous. It's, uh, it's fantastic to imagine. And within this facility, we'll have the opportunity to aggregate all of the processes that are disaggregated right now. The thing about lithium ion batteries, which were originally developed in the United States, is that they were scaled uh, in geographies that had significant um, detriments or significant negatives, as in high land cost, high energy cost, high labor cost, and disaggregated operations. What we're planning to do with this facility is bring together an integrated facility such that raw materials literally come in one side of the building and finished products come out the other, rather than having separate plants uh, in expensive geographies, particularly uh, on, the, uh, on the other side of uh, the Pacific, at least from us. Um, we also uh, you know, take as an article of faith finding the true cost uh, of, the, of the materials. This is true for our vehicle costs. This is how we cost our vehicles. This is as well how we're going to be costing the inputs for this plant. The way we're dimensionalizing this from a business perspective, you see the battery chassis for the, or the, the Model S chassis on the left. Um, we're now introducing a residential uh, product, the, the power wall. Uh, this is useful for uh, cycling your own generating, uh, uh, generate, generation of energy. Uh, in the home environment or alternatively for backup purposes. And then we have what we call the power pack for commercial, industrial, and at a scale, um, uh, grid-related use. The power wall uh, is uh, something that we, you know, we, we take as an article of faith that design is important, so it's something quite attractive, something that you would want to have on your wall. I'm actually doing a home right now that's going to have solar on the roof uh, and one of, these, uh, one of these in the garage, and we're sort of designing around it, uh, which is, which is uh, interesting and fun. Um, but it's got extraordinary capability. I won't go through all the statistics, um, but uh, the cost profile is extraordinary here. You, there will be offering in either seven or 10 uh, uh, kilowatt hour packs. The, the cost here reflect uh, the kilowatt hour costs uh, that are uh, implied in our business as a whole, which I should note are um, much greater, uh, I'm sorry, much lower uh, than any of the experts in the industry would have said. This illustrates, as I said, uh, the, uh, the scalable and integrated nature of the power pack module, 
and how we can aggregate it into a power pack. And a power pack is suitable for uh, an, a, a light industrial facility such as this, or at scale, larger applications, manufacturing, and ultimately up to, get, up to grid. The, uh, the services uh, or that can be uh, offered uh, with this product are many. Uh, you see them, all of you will know them uh, to the left. Um, uh, but each of the, these are just the near-term markets. Um, we can scale it uh, physically in, a, in, a, in an environment uh, such as this. This would be a concrete pad similar to a substation. Uh, this is what it would look like, literally. This is the same size pad uh, as, uh, as, uh, uh, as, you would, as the facility that you would be replacing. Uh, so it's an excellent and very cost-effective uh, way of going. Uh, in sum, uh, we see this as the le next logical step to achieve that, that true mission of clean, sustainable transportation. This is the critical linkage between uh, all of the potential, though intermittent, uh, generation that has been coming online, as Amory uh, so well illustrated, uh, and the, um, uh, the off-cycle use uh, that, uh, that, that transportation itself, but other uses uh, demands. Uh, this is the totality of the future, and, and uh, we, uh, as uh, agents of this, are hoping that others are going to follow us into this business. Thank you very much for your attention. Sorry to go so quickly.